Today's webinar will be about Jamf Protect and how it can help with compliance, threat detection, and malware prevention. I'm Kelly Conlin, a consulting engineer for security here at Jamf. For today's agenda, we're going to be covering the simplest path to macOS security, how does Jamf Protect work, and security incident response with Jamf. And first, I want to give a brief overview of Jamf. At Jamf, our mission is to help organizations succeed with Apple. And to do that, we now have our Apple Enterprise Management Platform. When it comes to the platform, the focus is to bring together the several products and solutions in our portfolio today to create a unified, consistent experience delivered through a platform. This means that we need to continue to connect users to resources efficiently, manage devices, and the apps powering those devices, all while protecting the user's data on those devices. We'll transform our portfolio of products into an extensionable platform that delivers on the promise of Apple Enterprise Management as we know it today and what it will become. Now, Apple is growing in the enterprise, and as employees are choosing Macs more, as those choices are being made, InfoSec is asking, how can we manage risk and gain more visibility into the Mac OS? Now, endpoint security has a long history on Windows. The internals of a PC have been well understood and relatively unchanged. Security teams know the tools available to them and how to interpret the results. But after hearing from many of our 40,000 customers that use Jamf to manage their Apple endpoints, they needed a security solution that doesn't break their Macs, but keeps up to date with each macOS updated release and provides proper visibility into the unique events that occur only on Macs. Therefore, a purpose-built Mac endpoint security solution was needed and introducing Jamf Protect. Now, to summarize Jamf Protect pretty quickly, um, overall, Jamf Protect solves the unique challenges of macOS security. And really, to do that, we're going to be preventing any sort of macOS malware and detecting Mac specific threats. Also, we'll be able to monitor and give you visibility into compliance of your devices without any sort of impact to your end users. Additionally, we have multiple methods of response and remediation to help you clear up any possible security incidents that happen on your Macs. All right, let's go further into the kinds of protections and insights Jamf Protect is going to offer. First up, we have known threats. Jamf Protect has a signature database of known threats that is very similar to the functionality that you get with AV tools that you may already be familiar with. Now, beyond the signature detections, we are also able to detect behavioral activity based off of analysis of different events that are occurring onto the Mac. Also, Jamf Protect can go beyond those prevention and detections to give you insights into other information. So to do that, we're also monitoring and able to filter out information from the unified logs, also all of the activity of the native security tools that comes preloaded onto the Mac, like XProtect, Gatekeeper, and MRT. And additionally, Jamf Protect is scanning a ton of different settings onto that device to give you a compliance view that is currently mapped to the CIS benchmarks. Now that compliance view is powered by what we call insights. So let me dive into insights a little bit more. Currently, we are utilizing the CIS benchmarks to do our auditing of the settings on your devices. This is our insights reporting. This will help you monitor and assess your, your organization's security baseline and determine compliance across your entire Mac fleet. Each insight is collected is optional, allowing you to craft a tailored report specific to you and your security posture. 
Additionally, for each insight that's collected, you have the ability to drill down into the details and see exactly which computers are compliant and non-compliant. So moving away from insights, let's talk about threat prevention. This is how we do our signature-based detections. In JF Protect, anytime we make updates to that signature database, you'll be able to see when those updates occurred from a date timestamp, as well as the latest version of that database. Additionally, within JF Protect's threat prevention, we open up that power that we're using to block and quarantine known threats for you to use what's called a custom prevent list. Think of this like making your own personal signature database of things you don't want running in your environment. This allows you to block processes by specifying the team ID, hash, or signing information associated with that process. Now, let's see threat prevention in action. So in this video, we have an end user that has downloaded malware unintentionally. Um, so they're going to open this app, and it is used as a cryptocurrency trading tool. As they go in and try and install this, they have admin pr privileges, so they're able to install their own personal applications onto their Mac. So as they go through completing the installation process, Jamf Protect is going to monitor for when this app tries to load. As you can see here, this is Gatekeeper and Threat Prevention. So both tools are able to alert the end user that there's a possible threat, while Gatekeeper is just warning them that this may be malicious and something that they shouldn't do, threat prevention still steps in and actually blocks the process and moves it to a quarantined location to prevent the end user from accessing it again, um, all while still reporting this information to your admins in the Jamf Protect console. So let's take a look at that. In the Jamf Protect console, you're able to see the detection from both Jamf Protect threat prevention and the gatekeeper activity, all with a date timestamp and providing as much information as possible about that event to make sure your teams can do accurate analysis of any possible threats. With Jamf Protect, all of this alert data can also be sent to your organization's SIM or wherever your security teams are analyzing security event information. Now with each, indi each individual detection, we provide additional details, like the binary information. So you can see the path of where this process was stored, the signing information, including the hash information of this process. This is extremely valuable when you're doing deeper analysis. Now, on the topic of visibility, Within Jamf Protect, we take visibility a step further and we have an embedded Apple security dashboard. This is where we've siloed all of the events from XProtect, Gatekeeper, and MRT. This allows you to see exactly what's happening and give you more comfort on those native security tools and how they're benefiting your Mac fleet. And to continue that topic of compliance and visibility, Jamf Protect also has what we call the unified logging filters. So this allows you to filter out information from the unified logs that are already being collected on your Mac. And this is really beneficial when you're doing analysis of a potential threat to have just more information on your user activity. The more contextual data you have, the more informed you are. And without looking at the full picture, it's like looking at a jigsaw puzzle with half of the pieces missing. So tapping into the unified logs, we can now pinpoint device file process and user information, which other way, otherwise may be siloed onto each individual Mac. So this is just helpful to add even more evidence that's collected by Jamf Protect when any, when any potential threat event may occur. Now within unified logs, this is reliant on having a SIM. So the data collected from the unified log filters with Jamf Protect will only be sent to a SIM or any sort of data collection endpoint. Now with SIMs, Jamf Protect understands that SIMs are very popular tools to be used as a single pane of glass and to do data visualization. In this example, we have Jamf Protect data in a Splunk dashboard. When data is sent from the Jamf Protect agent, into your SIM, it comes through over four, four, port 443 as a JSON file. 
Now, additionally, Jamf Protect can send data to either an S3 bucket from AWS or even to Azure Sentinel. So we have multiple paths forwards of getting you access to your data wherever you'd like to analyze it. Now, we've talked on signature detections, getting visibility, and compliance monitoring. But beyond that, Jamf Protect is also watching for a number of behaviors associated with malicious activity. Now, in this example, we're going to take that same malware that the end user tried to launch earlier, but was stopped by threat prevention because there was a signature match. Now, what if that developer changed their hash information and was no longer as a threat identified signature. So Jamf Protect is still giving you that adage coverage by monitoring for those specific behaviors associated with those threats. So now this is just a simple example of a plist getting added to launch daemons, but this particular plist is used by that malware to make it persistent. So as soon as the end user manually added it into the launch damage, this triggered the Jamf Protect agent to collect that information and report it all back into the Jamf Protect console. So as you can see, that launch daemon activity was collected as well as the activity associated with that apple juice malware. And again, to dive in deeper, you can see here all the binary information that was associated with that process as well as the file information. So you can see the path of where that file was stored, the size, the user that did it, as well as the hash details. Now, one of the more unique features of Jamf Protect is the integration with Jamf Pro to handle response. So when a security team identifies a threat on an endpoint, we know that IT can now be helped and get involved to help manage the isolation and remediation of that device. And Jamf Protect and Jamf Pro working together helps to make a really, really solid workflow of handling any sort of incident response. So let me show you what that looks like. Now using that same example from before of that suspicious plist being added to the launch daemon folder. So now that we know that this behavior is associated with known malware, we can handle response a little bit more restrictively. So as the user goes in, drops that same plist back into launch daemons, as soon as it's been added, the Jamf Protect agent triggers that detection and is now able to set up response with Pro. So the method of response that I've chosen for today is just a simple Jamf helper notification box telling the end user that there has been potential malicious activity and their device has now been isolated from the corporate network. So this can just be simple as writing a configuration profile exclusion um, that's isolating this device from that corporate profile. This could be turning off VPN access as soon as this threat has happened. And this is all powered through smart groups. It is a really, really powerful tool for both IT and security to handle threats. Now within Jamf Protect and our behavioral detections, we have what's called custom analytics. So within custom analytics, essentially you use the same sensor and monitoring power that comes with our behavioral detections to create and monitor for things that are unique in your environment. So the example I have up on the screen is actually from a request from a customer that wanted to be able to respond to a threat from threat prevention this, with Jamf Pro. So the same way they can respond to any of our behavioral detections within our analytics. So it's a very easy ask and a very easy example to kind of break down custom analytics. So what's gonna happen is when Jamf Protects Threat Prevention quarantines that app, when that event occurs, it's a file system event. So within Jamf Protect, we can monitor for file system events and give even more information to make it a very specific activity within our predicate syntax. So what will happen, that file will get quarantined that will then trigger the Jamf Protect agent and allow us to set up response with Jamf Pro. Okay, so let's see what's actually gonna happen. So for this example, I'm actually gonna utilize the open source tool called DEP Notify. It's typically used to onboard new users to their Macs, but it's a beautiful tool, has some really awesome functionality and can be completely customized with scripts. So for this example, we have a shared folder that you can see 
up here. This is something typically used by IT or InfoSec to extract or push things down to that Mac. And then additionally, we have a terminal window here showing that the directory where Jamf Protect quarantines items is currently empty. Now, I do want to say that to get access to this directory, you do need root level access. So let's see this workflow in action. Our end user is going to launch this iCar file, which is an AV testing file. So it's not actually anything malicious, but it was able to trigger Jamf Protect. So again, we have our Jamf Protect threat prevention notification telling the end user that there's been something malicious. This has been blocked and moved to quarantined. So as soon as the end user it hits OK, we can come over to terminal and we can now see that there is a quarantined file. So because of that custom analytics, analytic response with Jamf Pro has already started. So this is DEP Notify used for remediation. So one of the reasons I chose DEP Notify for this workflow is the customer that made this request wanted to lock the end user out of their desktop without logging them off of the machine. So my first thought was DEP Notify because of this beautiful full screen mode. And again, because it can be customized with a script, we can change the messaging, the branding, um, giving the end user kind of understanding of what's happening, as well as a status bar of the progress of remediation. So as soon as remediation is completed, again, that messaging and branding changes, gives the end user some best practices moving forward and kind of next steps, and they have an option to get out of that full screen mode. So as soon as they click OK, we can now see in that shared folder, we have that malware file zipped, ready to be removed, and that quarantine directory is now empty. So this is just an example of some of the more creative ways you can use Jamf Protect and Jamf Pro together to handle remediation. So let's briefly talk about deployment. So within Jamf Protect, it's a two-step deployment process. So we have our plan configurations that contains the settings for the device, our analytics, which again are those behavioral detections, and all of the certificates and permissions it needs. The next step, we have a PKG that contains the Jamf Protect agent. The way that Jamf Protect has been built, this is a vanilla PKG that needs to be deployed once. And from then on, the device will automatically have the Jamf Protect agent get updated when it checks in back to the Jamf Protect cloud. And again, that's all handled within that plan configuration profile. So both of those files, you push out through your MDM, scope it to your device, and then deploy it to your Macs. Now, just again, on that configuration front and customization you can do with Protect, you can actually do different configurations for different computer groups. So if you only want certain analytics or certain behavioral detections to happen on your developer's Macs, but you want all of the detections to occur on your C-suites or any sort of um, administrators, then you can set up separate configuration profiles for those different computer groups, associate them or scope them to the right associated devices, and still only need one PKG of the Jamf Protect agent. Now, with Jamf Pro 1027, deployment got even easier. So now there's a full integration between Jamf Protect and Jamf Pro. So utilizing the Jamf API, Jamf Protect API, you're able to register your Jamf Protect tenant into your Jamf Pro server, and doing so will automatically download the latest version of the Jamf Protect agent, again, in that PKG, as well as sync over all of your plans so you can automatically deploy them as configuration profiles as needed. This just makes for even easier and more seamless deployment. So to recap everything we've kind of discussed today and to summarize the benefits of what you're going to get with Jamf Protect. Jamf Protect is really the best solution to maintain endpoint compliance, monitor for and remediate any security incidents on Mac OS with minimal impact to the device and end user experience. Again, thank you so much for listening. We will email you the recording when it's ready. And if you're ready to get started with Jamf, scan the QR code that you see on the screen and immediately get in touch with us.